Okay, so let me go back to the, I'm just gonna do my desktop again. All right, so let's start off with a little bit of WordPress news and events. It's kind of quiet this time of year. You know, we had a lot of WordPress uh, word camps and other virtual conferences over the past few months. So things have slowed down a little, um, but I did want to bring up at least for folks to put this on your calendar. Um, December 14th is the, the state of the word 2021. And if you don't know what that is, that is Matt Mullen, Mullenweg. I was going to mispronounce his name. He's, he's the founder or one of the founders, the primary founder, I should say, of WordPress. So every year he gives one of these state, sort of, you know, state of the union, state of the word kind of presentations where he'll talk about the past year and also give some hints into the future and talk about the roadmap. So, um, you know, in the past, this is where a lot of that first discussion around what, you know, what was previously called Gutenberg, which is now the block editor, that's where it came up was in one of these state of the word talks. So I, I think it's a good thing to, to take a look at either. You can watch it, the live stream of it on the 14th. Um, it's at noon Eastern time. You can just go to wordpress.org. It's, it's, it's advertised all over there or watch it afterwards. They put it on their, the YouTube channel. So it's, you know, again, it, it's a good way just to kind of keep on top of what's coming up in the future. Um, it may not affect your day-to-day -day website, but it, it'll give you some good ideas of where WordPress is going. And the other one I think is kind of helpful to um, WordPress, but also meetup organizers like ourselves is the, the WordPress annual survey. Uh, and I'll send out a link to both of these things afterwards too. So you, you don't have to write these down, but the annual survey, um, it really does help. I think, you know, uh, the community does give feedback back to wordpress.org, you know, the main WordPress um, um, kind of company, but also it goes, it does trickle down to uh, meetup organizers like ourselves. So, you know, just take a few minutes if you can to, to fill out that survey. Um, it's very valuable. It gives us some ideas about things to do um, to do better. And um, again, I think it's, it's really good to make your voice heard. So I'll send out a link to that afterwards. That's it for news. So tool and plugin. Peter, I'm going to stop sharing. You got something? Okay, to share? I do. Yeah, let me uh, grab the screen. Let me get the right screen. That one. You see the earth? Yep. Great. Um, so we often use a lot of, and some of the tools that we share are, are um, related to graphics. And there's one, there's two, there's two that I use now that I've found recently that are are, are pretty great um, for simple and yet efficient ways of managing graphics. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is called redketchup.io. So it's redketchup.io. And what's nice about this tool is that it's clean, it's easy, and it has some just very effective, you know, if you want to go and resize an image, you can go and grab an image and, and you, you upload it. Um, you know, we've got the cats are being featured in my, my blog post. You can crop images, um, you can resize them, um, but from the main dashboard, you have a lot of choices. And one of the ones that I, I like to use is the bulk image resizer. Um, say I have a lot of images that I've pulled off of Unsplash and I wanna reduce them all by, you know, 20 to 25% of the, of the total. So. There's some really nice things. It does have a compressor. There's other tools that I use for that. So this is a great uh, set of tools that are just here to use. Um, if you want to create a favicon, uh, which is the, the the icon on the top uh, on your tabs and browsers of, it's all just packaged here, these, these great little tools. The other one for anybody, and I don't know if we have anybody that uses um, uh, Photoshop, I found this, this tool called Photopea, I believe is how you would pronounce it, P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A.com. You open it up and it works exactly like Photoshop. Well, exactly, of course, is you know, maybe stretching it. But I'll tell you, I could open up this in, in moments and do what I would do in Photoshop and be closed and done before my actual Photoshop app would open up in the first place. Um, especially my computer. So these two tools, uh, redketchup.io um, for just kind of managing graphics real quick, resizing, bulk image resizing, things like that. And Photop or Photopia, um, Photopia, one of those, uh, two great 
graphic tools that I've been using with just when I need to do something quick, they're right there. I load it in the browser and I can edit graphics. We'll send out links to these two. Do you have to yeah. sign up? Do you know, Peter, for those? Do you have to like log in or no. create an account or anything? Well, no, nothing at all. The only thing in um, in the photo uh, PO1 is there is a premium um, and it's not expensive, but it has to do with how many levels of undo you have. And you, you get like 20 levels of undo if you're that believe me not even close i go one undo you know kind of thing um and maybe some storage and things like that but no just loading in the only thing you have to do is you have to look at these couple of ads on the right i don't know how long this is going to last because I, it's mm -hmm. got to take some resources to run um that's it and then yeah and red ketchup nothing there's no upsell there's no fee they don't even put ads on it don't red know ketchup. i don't know how they they do what they do but they do <laughs> That catch up to one you, you mentioned before that does the WebP conversion, right? Is yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. So if you want to convert an image and and try it in WebP, this is yeah, you know you just get like ads and all, but um, it, it's all kinds of converting. Heck, you can even go and get a. I, I haven't tried it yet. I think you can get an online video and convert it to a to an animated GIF if you want, just through you know a couple of clicks. So pretty jazzy. Very neat. Yeah. You guys got these great, great tips. I, I always write them down, Peter. <laughs> I was like, where, where's he find these things? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm on too many podcasts, too many, <laughs> too many things, you know, when somebody mentions, hey, what tools do you use? And all of a sudden, you know, there's a new one. You go try it out. And you go, hey, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let me, um, so let's dive into our main topic tonight. And again, I'm going to share my screen and um, I apologize. I, I I don't do these full screen just because I'm gonna be hopping back and forth between my browser, so it's still easier to keep it in in outline mode. Hope folks are okay with that. So our our topic tonight is adding a blog to your WordPress website, which kind of sounds like a, a very basic thing. And when Peter and I were doing the outline, we're like, well, doesn't everyone know how to do that? Isn't that what WordPress is? But as we we started outlining the topic, no, we we think there's actually quite a bit of meat to this. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do our quick introductions of ourselves, and then we're going to recap, again, give people context. So if you're here for the first time, give some context around where this fits into our larger project. Um, then we're going to do just some level setting in terms of um, what, is a page, what is a post, how is it different than a page? We'll, we'll cover some um, terminology there. And then a lot of the time we're going to spend tonight, just like we've been trying to do, is around demos. So Peter's going to be creating a blog post from scratch. Um, I'm going to show a couple of tweaks and enhancements to, to blog posts. Uh, and then the next part is displaying that post. So we're going to create it first, then obviously we need to display it. So Peter's going to show how to display a single blog post, and then I'm going to show how to display multiple blog posts. And as always, we'll, we'll wrap up with some uh, Q&A time, final thoughts, et cetera. But you know, as I said, if you have questions as we're doing this, feel free to, to interject at any time. Real quick about myself, I'm Ray, I'm one of the organizers of the Harford WordPress group. Uh, I've been in software development for 25 plus years um, as a developer slash software architect. Uh, worked for some large corporations in my career. Um, I've been using WordPress around probably going on five years now, four plus ish years. Uh, I currently have my own business, you know, creating websites for small businesses and, and nonprofits. Most of them are local around here in Connecticut. Um, so I live in Newington, Connecticut, uh, which is not too far from Hartford. Um, I'm married, got no kids, and we have one crazy old cat, and I am a geek. Peter. Hey, I'm Peter Ingersoll. Um, I'm also in Connecticut in South Windsor. Um, it's not too far from the airport uh, across the river. Um, I have been using technology to support marketing communications, um, discovered WordPress, um, boy, 20 years, not 20 years ago, 10 years ago, um, and have built over time, you know, that's been my area of focus. I've worked at organizations that um, I had a lot of opportunity to kind of be on the cutting edge of some web development stuff while not being a, a, a programmer or coder, actually a communication person. So um, I'm self-taught in a lot of ways. It's one reason why I really like to teach other, uh, other people because, uh, and this is a great, uh, community for that and um, I'm married two children and two new and um, they're they're becoming cats very quickly they are like if you looked at them they are no longer kittens and that's me cool all right so again like I said this this um, presentation tonight is really part of a, a larger project that we started 
at least five months ago or so. So we're just going to give a quick recap of that if you're joining us for the first time or a refresher for folks who've um, bounced in and out. So our goal has been to, to build you know, a moderately complex website from scratch. So we're not building you know, something super complex, but also not something super easy. We're, we're trying to make it so that at least you're, you're going to learn from what we're, what we're building. Um, but we're also, we've challenged ourselves is to use only free plugins and when needed. Um, so we're not just going to start, we didn't start off with 50 plugins installed and then show you, you know, kind of everything from that point. We're, we're introducing plugins, um, you know, as I said, when needed and talk about why we're introducing a plugin. So each meetup has been building on prior ones. So if you missed prior ones, like I said, you can go back to our YouTube channel and, and watch them. Um, but it's not necessary. Again, if you're here for the first time, you can certainly pick up what we're doing. Um, we're also trying to demonstrate best practices versus just quick and dirty solutions. I mean, there are times where we have to make some compromises, but we'll, we'll tell you when we're doing that and why we're doing that. Um, also, we, we really hope that people are following hands-on as much as possible. So um, again, if you've missed all the prior presentations, you can go back and start from scratch, or you can practice some of this on um, you know, a, a demo site. Don't do this on your live site, <laughs> but follow along. So I think that's a great way to, to make sure that you understood what we explained, but also to have other questions afterwards. And if you go back to our very first presentation, you can even see that you can do all this locally on your machine, on your computer. You don't need to even do this through a, a web server. Um, so our project, just again, from a context standpoint, we've been building a fictional nonprofit, a, a website for a fictional nonprofit. We called it, cleverly enough, WP Animal Rescue. Uh, and then if you think about what, what are the goals of an animal rescue, it's things like education, um, getting donations, facilitating pet adoptions, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it, 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 we were talking about a little bit earlier too, that, you know, even though we're, <laughs> what we're doing here is very specific to this animal shelter, um, you should be able to take away things from this for your own website. So it's not like, you know, this is only going to be useful to you if you're <laughs> running an animal shelter. So it really can be applied to uh, any type of website. Um, so if you, again, if you go back to the very beginning, we talked about starting off with not with a blank page. So we've, we've had this inspiration site, which uh, we haven't really gone back to too much because it, it, you know, it, it served its purpose. That's the thing, you know, we're not trying to copy another site out there, but we needed something to, to kind of kickstart uh, kick our design. Um, so again, this, is, this will be in the slides as well if you want to look at what this, this site looks like. Um, but where we are with our site now, it, it's been a bit impressive. Every time Peter and I meet, we, we kind of go back and look at the site like, hey, we, you know, five, <laughs> five months later, we, we've got more than just a blank page. So uh, and you can always, you, you can take a look at it yourself too. If you go to build.harfordwp.com, you'll see the site in progress and you'll see what we're building tonight. Um, and, and again, this is maybe saving something to the end, but we're also hoping when we're done with this too, that this is something we can share and distribute with folks. So we, we need to figure out how we're going to do that. So, um, but we, so far, again, if you missed the prior sessions, go back and certainly take a look. Here's some of the things that we, we've built out um, in our past sessions. So let's talk a bit about blogs. Um, and again, we'll talk a little bit more terminology. And Peter, we'll, we haven't really figured out how we're going to split up this discussion. So jump in or grab a, you know, as I'm going through, grab whatever you want. So I guess the, the first thing, stepping a couple of steps back here is, if you think about our project is uh, an animal shelter. So what, why would an animal shelter want a blog? You know, when you think about yourself, you're, let's say you're running a small business, why would you want a blog? I know we have some people on this call and we've had in our other prior meetups who all they have is a blog. You know, that's their primary focus of the website. But what if, you know, what if your site is something that blogging is not the primary purpose? Why would you want a blog? Well, Again, from an organization, think about like a nonprofit or our animal shelter, we still want to share news, you know, information, events, et cetera, with visitors, um, you know, and, and so that a, a blog is a great way to do that. Um, also that, you know, from a SEO perspective, we're not going to get really deep into SEO tonight, but it's one of those things where the more content you have on your website, the more there is for Google and other search engines to crawl and index. So, Again, more, more content is, uh, is favorable to SEO. Um, and also just having visitors, encouraging visitors to come back to your site. If you have a static site that doesn't change at all, you know, people may go look at it and never, never return. But if, if you want people to come back and kind of be engaged and kind of build loyalty to, to your website, a blog is a great way to get people to um, have return visits. 
Peter, you want, how about you cover these last two bullets, if, if you don't mind? Yeah, no. So when you are, when you have a blog and you are creating content, um, you know, over time and kind of continuously, whatever that schedule might be, and you know, you need to be fair to yourself what time you can put into it. Um, it shows that you're engaged, and it shows that you really, you know, um, you're really involved in what you're doing and what you're talking about. And for a lot of people doing it, you know, just having the blog itself is is the whole creative outlet they're looking to do. But when you're when you're consistent about you know, demonstrating a certain insight and expertise and sharing that you're demonstrating your authority. And, you know, your, your visitors see you as somebody who is really like, you know, contributing and paying attention and sharing that information and that, that idea of building uh, trust with visitors, you know, may lead to something, whether it's a business that you may decide to run in, uh, get involved in, or maybe you end up, you know, creating an email list and, and, uh, and you, you use that for promotional purposes if you are ultimately to sell something or even use affiliate links, things like that. But this idea that you're somebody who provides information. And then um, the idea of repurposing content uh, for and from social media, again, it's all using your website as the hub to everything else that you're doing. And when you, when you create a, a blog post, the, the blog post is and especially now we're looking at relatively significant amounts of content is, is a thing that you can point to from a number of different areas or a thing that you can pull quotes out of the Twitter quotes and things like that, that you share and point back to your website. So it becomes sort of this, this point of, of connection uh, with your, with your uh, website uh, as the hub. So it's, it's really, again, all about kind of engaging and engaging over time and contributing and as things change. And then when you're looking at a website like what we're doing, uh, people who are involved with pet adoption and fostering and all, they're, they are engaged over time. So it's, it, this is a great you know, uh, opportunity for this fictional site to keep connected with all the people that are helping them or getting the word out about the value of their um, their organization and all. So it, it's a great way to connect. And just one last thing on that last point too. So again, we're not saying don't, you know, don't post things through social media, et cetera. That's what we're saying, repurpose it to, right. you know, for and from. And, and going way back to when we first talked about websites in general, you know, um, goals, et cetera, we, we, we said, unless your name is Mark Zuckerberg, you know, you don't own Facebook or Instagram, whatever. So, right. You know, there's times where people, they put a lot of time and effort into social media posting and something happens and then your, you know, your account gets shut down or, or whatever, you can lose all those things. So it, again, it's, it's just wise for you to, like your website is something that you own. So, you know, putting, uh, you know, putting that same content on multiple areas, especially on your website, I think is, is just valuable, you know, from a, a, um, a ownership standpoint. So let's talk a little bit in the weeds about what is a post versus a page. Um, we covered a lot of this when we talked about um, custom post types not too long ago. So this may look very familiar to folks. We've reused, repurposed this content. So mm -hmm. a, a post in general, when you think about a post, you know, uh, we're talking things like blog articles. And again, WordPress itself started as a blog, a blogging platform. So a lot of the terminology in WordPress is really related to, to blogs. And again, that's what a blog post really means. Um, as opposed to pages, which are more static content, you know, so things like our homepage, our about page, um, you know, FAQ pages, et cetera, that, that's content that, you know, is fairly static. Um, posts generally are also time sensitive, not always, but what I mean by that is, um, you know, from a blog standpoint, you're, you're publishing new content every month or so. Uh, a lot of times you, you maybe want to index that content by, you know, uh, by month, et cetera, or, you know, so people can go back and search for things in the past. Whereas pages in general are more long lived, meaning your homepage doesn't change that often. You're not putting new versions of your homepage out every month, so hopefully, or, or new versions of your about page every month. Um, and then from an organization standpoint, posts can be organized by date, author, there's a lot of other metadata you can organize them by. Pages, generally, the way you get to a page is through your navigation menu. So you can put links to um, you know, pages from other pages or buttons, et cetera. Peter, you want to cover the last three? Sir? Yeah, so um, the last three, so the categories and tags. Yep. Right? So 
with with posts, um, you can apply a uh, what's called taxonomy or a hierarchical or non-hierarchical, but way of organizing. So assigning um, categories um, and tags allow you to organize posts as you build a library of posts and you want to see um, a post that are under a particular topic or category, maybe multiple categories. And tags even get a little bit more granular. Um, you know, pages, standing content connected through navigation um, is not organized the same way. It's, it's not that kind of um, library of, of content. Um, in terms of archive pages, again, this the idea that a, a page is a, a thing that you link to through navigation it's the standing content versus this growing library of, of content um, that you could build various archive pages or archive a whole list of, of uh, content for particular categories a lot of ways of building archive pages but it's and it's dynamically driven so that as you add another um, uh, post these archives are are rebuilt dynamically uh, which is great and then um, the the non-hierarchical versus can have hierarchy so a page that is a sub of another page where you're you're looking at uh, a level of organization on on the back end and depending on how you build menus and also that you can have you know a, a about us and you might have you know our staff and our things like that so there's a there's a structure a hierarchy um typically applied to pages Posts don't need, you know, they can be done hierarchical, but they, you have a lot of ways where you just kind of put it, you tag them, and then you use them as you wish. Um, would you say that's pretty accurate? Yep. Description? Good. Yep. So just again, real quick, these are just in general rules of thumb. Um, yeah, so pages, if you think about what's the difference, especially people are new to WordPress, that it's a little confusing. Like, do I create this thing as a post or a page? Here, just yeah. keep this in mind. You know, pages are that static content, doesn't change very often. Posts are the, the content you're regularly updating, you know, time sensitive. So blogs or news, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just for, for everyone to understand, the way it works with WordPress and kind of the, the database and how content is stored is they're ultimately, they're stored the same way. It's just the yeah. posts have all of this extra, um, the categories and the timestamps and all that, that really, you know, take it to that dynamic level that we've been describing. So our first um, yeah, section right here, there. do you want me to, yeah, do you want me to yeah. get the presentation? If you, you can to... drive and then yeah. I'll, I'll just take over it when we get to it. But sure. um, so I'm going to talk about creating a post. Um, but, you know, some some things to think about when you're writing a, a blog post, I think are important. And, it, and it's, it's nice to have a, a kind of a starting position and what you're trying to do and, and some guidelines and, and advice on best practices for, for writing a blog post. So, you know, when you're writing something, there, there's things that, whether it's a blog post on a website or any other writing, you know, you, you're obviously, you should be keeping your readers and your, your target audience in mind. So, you know, thinking from the perspective of the people who are coming to this, this piece of content to learn something, discover something, you know, um, that you just keep in mind who you're writing to and, and, and what their perspective is and even what their level of, you know, um, if there's a jargon issue and things like that, you know, just keep your, your readers in mind, you know, limit jargon unless your audience is specifically very in tune to that and expect that. Um, when you're writing a blog post, you know, including images, links, useful content, you know, reason to go to the, to the page, um, it's it's dressed up in a way that helps people really kind of, you know, look and absorb content in the in, in a in a really um, kind of a dynamic way. Um, but embellishing your content makes it more attractive to the readers and more attractive to things like search engines and all. And we'll there's a lot of overlap that we'll be talking about and how these things kind of readership and search engines. We're not talking. SEO uh, just yet, but yet we are, because when you're writing well for humans, you are writing well for Google, who's trying to understand how humans think. So what you're doing is you're writing for the web, um, comprehensive, but scannable. Like, you know, think about when you go and you're reading on the web, are you reading every last word like you're reading a novel, you know, sitting in your, on your chair with a lamp over and a book? Probably not. You're probably scanning. You're probably looking for those, those things that apply to what you are interested in. 
you're looking for the summary, you're looking for you know, the parts that are going to be more interesting to you, you may go back to something that was referenced earlier. So when you're, when we're on the, on reading uh, blog posts and web content, we're, we're very often reading it rather haphazardly, but you're, you're, we're scanning. So writing for that is, is really valuable, really important. So, you know, using headings, short paragraphs. I see a lot of posts out there that are written by copywriters where the paragraphs are just huge. And don't be afraid to break a paragraph into much smaller pieces, single sentences that wrap, you know, you got three lines because now you're looking at it on the phone is long enough. You know, it's, it's kind of like newspaper writing too, where we, we look at, you know, the, the number of inches that are in, the, in a paper, not that people read paper anymore. And that's my background, by the way. Um, but, you know, writing in a way that, you know, it's, you're, you're, you have relatively short sentences, relatively short paragraphs. Google likes that because people like that. It's easier to take in the information. Use formatting tools that are out there, bold italics, call outs, lists, anything that's making it easy for some, easier for a reader to kind of find those, that information um, that interests them the most. Be sure to check on mobile devices. So again, writing for the web, you're writing for the phone now. You're writing for smart devices where, you know, um, and it, it, if, if you're not taking that into account, if you don't look at your content on a phone, you may be, you know, people may be trying to read your content. And if it's not working too well on a phone and most, uh, we're, what we're lucky is most WordPress um, themes, the way of, you know, what we're doing, a lot of this kind of happens automatically, but you still have to pay your attention. And there's things you might need to do on the mobile side. Um, and then again, in terms of making it easy to digest, using intro copy, the summary copy, um, using excerpts, which are again summarizing the data, the 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 relatively new TLDR, too long didn't read section, which is you know kind of the summary of what the thing is, so that somebody can go right to it and go, oh okay, these are the key points. Now I want to dig deeper into the into the content. Um, so this extending that is. Um, the headings, the structure, and how that even ties to accessibility. So again, when you're organizing a document, when you're organizing something you're writing, in this case, blog posts, those headings are, are important to use. The headings are not for design, they are for structuring and formatting your document. So you're, you're organizing the content that you're creating. And a lot of, again, we're talking longer blog posts, which is kind of a target. If you've got a short blog post and it's appropriately short, you know, you need to worry about this far less. But when you get into some of the longer posts, you know, really looking at the, the formatting of, of, you know, and the proper use of the headings um, is, is really important. And it's important for accessibility because if somebody's going with a screen reader and they want to look at, they might jump from heading to heading to heading, just like you're scanning with your eyes, they're scanning with their device. It's going to be looking for headings and having things in an organized way so that an H three heading level is under an H2 um, and then another H3. And then if you, then you go back to an H2. So there's a, there's the, the you're using the hierarchy, hierarchy properly. And then what, what I always look at is, you know, use what you learned. And for me, ninth grade English class, you know, Mrs. Robinson and how to really kind of uh, write an essay and how you intro and summarize and things like that. All those writing rules still apply. So um, the writing environment, this is something that I, I, I'm, I think it's important to talk about to some level because for one thing, because I hear a lot of people on podcasts that I listen to and all, you know, complaining about things like the block editor. And I think in a lot of cases, they, they may not have tried to realize that there's a lot of different ways that you can write content to go into WordPress. You can use, you can go right into the WordPress block editor and start editing. Um, you could use, there's a classic block. If you're somebody who's been using WordPress for a while, you might be using classic press, which are or not classic press, but the, the, the classic. Um, classic editor. <clears throat> yeah, the classic editor uh, plugin, which is going to be phased out, but there is actually a classic block and I can show it to you um, when we get there that that is a way of writing the other way. And then you convert it, you can easily convert it to the block editor. Um, we're we're kind of trying to stay with you know, the, the block editor when we can, but it, you can also write in Google Docs and use copy and paste. And 
and it works if if you do it following certain basic rules and I've heard people say, oh, does it work? I, I found that it works. So I, I, I really would be curious to see what they are or aren't doing, you know, and you can, you can do the same thing with uh, Microsoft Word, write in Word and use your, your headings the same way that you would use um, in the browser. When you copy and paste, those will, those will transfer over. It's, it's pretty nice. And, and in fact, even things like adding images, um, if you copy and paste that over into a blog post, you'll get placeholders for those images. In some cases, it might link to, if you're doing it from Google Docs to your Google Doc image, um, and, and you want to replace that. In Word, I found that it just says, hey, there's an image here um, that you need to upload because that's what was in your original um, document. But um, yeah, so there's a lot of ways that you can write outside of WordPress, whatever is going to get you in the, the place you know, you can use your phone and use Notepad if that's what you want to do, and then bring that over. So, um, a lot of writing environments that you can use. So, um, when we're writing posts, and some of the things that we're going to pay attention to, and we'll, we'll we'll look at as we do this, are the the featured images and how they're used in the site. How why you know using an excerpt is kind of an important thing to pay attention to as a way of summarizing the content and using it for the archive pages, things like that. And the further the metadata that's, again, you, you got your main content, but there's these other bits of information and I just wanna make sure we, we cover some of that. Next slide, Ray. Um, so some of the things that we are gonna be looking at, uh, just break down is these are this, the, the content sections, the title, the content, um, which is going to be your copy or images of your links, um, that the excerpt, the featured image, all in how we're going to do this in the editor, and then with the metadata. And there's some there's some carryover where um, Ray's going to cover some things with like categories and tags, but you know it all it all applies. Um, uh, Ray, Ray's going to expand on some of that. You know the publish date, um, all of this uh, metadata that we'll be looking into. And then we've got I think one more slide here. And uh, one thing we didn't want to forget is, for, especially for people who have other people using their website, when writing a blog post or really any content for a page, we have user roles in WordPress. If you're an admin, you're going in there and you're writing your own posts and, 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 and publishing and you've got full control of the whole site. But you may have other people on the site and you can set them up in, in user roles at different levels. So, you know, a contributor can write a post and then it, it, they cannot publish it. Uh, an editor or an admin has to go in and then publish that. An author can publish and manage their own posts so that they can write an author level, can write their own content but um, and publish it and manage it. They can go in and edit and things like that, but they can't do it for any other authors. An editor can do that for all writers. They can go in, publish and manage all posts. And of course, the administrator can do the same. Uh, manage. So it's, it's important to know that if you have multiple writers that you can set them up at different levels, um, different user roles. All right. So any questions for Peter before he dives into the, the demo yeah, on the terminology both of us. Or, or big context? Anything new that anybody may have heard or I think the copying and pasting a word thing, I think that some of that also goes back to in the past, there were times I know with the, even with the classic editor where that didn't work well, you know, because sometimes like when you pasted from word, some of that like, you know, junk from, from word, the, the styling and formatting used to not carry over properly. But you're right, since the block editor, I don't know if they've been improving it behind the scenes, but that definitely has, has looked, um, it looked like it's paced, it paced a lot better than it used to in the past. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sue's so yeah. asking, we're going to talk about schema. Yeah, no, I think we're not, we're not going to get into to that. I think that's definitely within the, the SEO realm. Yeah, we were talking about like maybe at some point doing a, a part two of this, going into things like that, Sue, around like, you know, making, uh, making some adjustments for SEO purposes. Yeah, there's, there's a lot with the, uh, um, you know, this project, build a site together where, and this is, I think, how you know Ray and I might actually do something where we're comfortable even building everything, putting in the content we have, and then going back and styling things um, at a kind of global level, but then also doing optimization and things like that. So um, there's a lot of things that when, once you get your, your content loaded in, then you go in and you can work on, on the schema and 
that's and then going forward obviously you know you you manage that as you proceed but in initially building something um we're allowing ourselves the opportunity to go back and do optimizations and you know speed improvements and all kinds of things and just one quick last one peter eileen asked would it be worth to paste the word text into notepad and then to the web page I mean, you can do that. I think the thing with pasting in a notepad, you may lose, like what Peter was saying, the images, you know, if you had images in there, or even some of, um, I'm not sure how well bullets paste over if you put into notepad. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's the that. thing. So I think I, I, I know exactly, in a lot of cases, you move something in a notepad to clear out all formatting, because what used to happen is you would paste into Word, and I mean, you would paste from Word into WordPress and you would get all of the word formatting invading your, your content. You would get all of this markup and HTML, MSO, I remember all, and it never worked well. So you would have to, a, a, a paste from Word got added, which would strip things out. Um, or what we all did is this very thing. You go to Word, you go to Notepad, you paste it in Notepad, then you paste it into your WordPress site. And now what you're getting is the raw text and paragraphs. And, and that's, that's great. But what, what we can do is we can actually take advantage of if you are using formatting in Word, you can now paste it in. And in my experience now, um, your mileage may vary. Um, you, you, you are getting all of that formatting properly adapted into uh, WordPress versus all the, uh, crud that came over from from word and we'll experiment i mean that's the whole thing experiment uh, give it a shot you may you may be surprised um you know how how things work um so i'm going to create a post and it's going to be a longer post called advice on adopting kittens and cats because this is an animal shelter site um and and the, the posts that we're going to create are to, um, you know, enhance the, the uh, pet adoption world um, of, of this uh, agency. So, so I'm adding something that's appropriate. Now, you know, it may be something that you did as uh, a page, but in this case, we're going, to, we're, we're going to say this is a blog post content because maybe there's a bunch of different things that happen over where you're adding more information all about, you know, the whole process of adopting animals. Um, so the way, uh, WordPress works, like, like, you know, anybody's used WordPress, there's many ways to do the same thing. Um, so we are in the admin section. Uh, we are looking at the post section and we can go to, uh, all posts, which is the default where you're listing the posts that you have. You can either click on add new, uh, in the left menu or click on add new, uh, right at the top of the screen. And we are using the, uh, block editor. Um, so this is the block editor interface uh, for um, uh, in Cadence. We have the Cadence theme loaded. Um, sections to show you um, and, and how they work. This is the title area, the main section area. Uh, the post, the metadata, the categories and tags are in this right side, which is where this setting the featured image, the area for adding an excerpt, the way these work is you, you click them, uh, the arrow up or down to um, open up that particular option uh, box. Permalink is the, is the URL right now. This doesn't have a URL because we haven't uh, put any content in there. And then as we add blocks, we're gonna have block options here. Um, and we'll get into some other options that we need to. Um, one of the other things, there is a list view that we'll use. And um, if we have time, if we have time, um, I wanna share what's coming in WordPress 5.9 that really, takes us to the next level and it's going to make a lot of people really happy um, how the, what's happening with the list view and the inserter and all. Um, but I'm creating a post called advice on adopting kittens and cats. So I just pasted that in and you'll see what happens here. Um, uh, how quickly does that happen? The, the, you got to save the first time. Yeah. yeah you got to save it the first time because right now it is, it is just a, Post equals 245, which is not particularly help, uh, uh, helpful. But um, now that it's it actually auto-saved, 
you can see the URL slug, that link is based on the title, Advice on Adopting Kittens and Cats. And we'll, we can leave that there. Um, you know, the, you can go in and edit and shorten it uh, as you wish. Now, here's the thing. I wrote this post. It's got a lot of lorem ipsum, in this case, lorem cat ipsum, dolar, you know, there's devices that you can use for placeholders and all. This is a Google Doc. And in this Google Doc, um, I've got the content. I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing it, the, the copy and pasting or just the, the typing in. Um, and you'll see when I highlight certain sections that, you know, this is an H2 um, that is a heading two, and that can carry over uh, a heading three, which is a sub of that section and all, but you'll see that in a second. But in some cases, I'm going to copy and paste. In other cases, I'm going to go to each section because I want to show you, you know, how things work once you uh, start typing. Now, the default block in WordPress in the block editor is the paragraph block. If you start typing, um, you are creating a paragraph. If I hit enter, I'm typing another uh, paragraph, okay? So, and so on. So this, these are, this is something again that people I think need to get used to. You can just start typing and hit enter like any word processor and just, do everything as paragraphs and then go in and start adjusting things. And meaning if you want to take this first paragraph and let's just say this first paragraph is um, what I had here, I'm going to, I'm going to allow myself the chance to copy and paste. Oh, see, I move that. Um, this is, this is from my, and this is the copy that I, I'm working off of. Um, so I might say, you know, I have a summary section that I might want to put at the top of the screen, all right? Now, if I then wanted to put a list of things, right? So that's a paragraph block. Um, if I hit enter after that, and I put in a slash, the slash is gonna start showing me the available blocks that I have. And if I happen to know what those blocks are, um, I can know that say I wanted to do a list, I start typing LI and now I get a list block. So it's a bulleted list. I could take that list block and I can also uh, change that once I start putting content in. And um, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna do these one, kind of one at a time, but so here's some copy that I want to put there. Now if I hit enter here, I'm still in the list block. I now have another, as you would expect, another bullet point. Um, now I'm copying right now, right out of, my Google Doc, there's my Google Doc. I'm gonna copy that and I can paste in, or if I type, and now I get um, these other, now it took, see, this is an interesting thing, it's the experiment. So it took these three blocks and because I entered them separately from that other list, it added a second list block. So here's a list block, here's a list block. Here's an easy way to fix, to, to get those to join. It should be, if I hit backspace here, it now goes, it, it brings that content into the previous one. In fact, sometimes you hit backspace and then backspace and then re-enter and now you have the bullet points. And this is not dissimilar to something you might experience in a word, for example, you know, where you, oh, I wanna get that and I'm, I fell out of my list um, and things like that. So there's a list block. So we've already added a paragraph uh, block and a list, list block. Um, and you can always go and preview your uh, document. And the way I did that is I went to preview and selected preview a new tab. And now I'm starting to build my blog post. All right. So, and we'll talk about the meta stuff and all and why my name is there. And all. But here's the paragraph. Here's my bullet points. Um, say I, I've got this start typing thing. I don't want that. I, I go onto that block. I click the three dots here. And now I have all these choices of what I can do with that block. And one of them is remove the block. And now that block is gone. I could have also highlighted and hit backspace or delete. Again, not too dissimilar from other, other um, word processes. Just have to get used to the fact that maybe certain things are, are popping up now. And, and, and Ray, I don't know if your preference, do you prefer the toolbar to be above each block or do you put it in the top toolbar? I leave it above each block. I do too. So mm -hmm. there is an option 
if you go to option, I got to remember because I never used this. Um, remember where it is? Uh, top toolbar. Yeah. It's right at the top. And now instead of, as I go through here, now my choices for each block are at the top of the screen or locked into the top of the screen. And this may be a comfortable way to do it again if you're doing your initial data entry and you don't want to have that thing in the way. You just want to type and hit enter and type and hit enter. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to kind of get that out of the way. But again, you go up here on the top right, the, the uh, three dots in the top corner gives you all kinds of options and turning the top, top toolbar on or off. Now I've moved it back where it's connected to whatever block that I'm on. I know that this it actually makes it feel a bit more like Word, you know, because like so then you have that ribbon kind of your, your tool. Yeah. On top, so, yeah. yeah. The only reason I don't do it is because a lot of times I'll be down here and then I'm like mousing up, you know, mm, get up there. And, and, and what happens is it's what you're used to. It's what you're comfortable. You have options. If you're if you like it out of the way and a lot of times it drives people crazy. They're like, get out of my way. Um, and there there have been and will continue to be incremental improvements to to this interface. So I will uh, go back to just putting it right where I am because that's what I'm comfortable with. So now I want to have um, my next section is going to be a headline. So if I look at this document that I wrote, I have a I have a headline. This is a, a headline for a section. Um, you're formatting your document. This is a heading two because right now my title is actually my H1. That is the the top level of of this document. The H2 is going to be um, this. I'm starting a section called, is a cat the best choice for you? So I could take this. Now, there, I could do a couple of ways. Now, if I took this and just um, pasted it in, I hit a control shift paste, which says, don't give me any formatting. And it came in it's just a paragraph. If I just hit enter, if I just pasted it, no, oh, I didn't guess I didn't copy it, the whole thing. That's one of the things you, it has to, it sees those things um, in relation to the other content. So there you go. This is, this is the live and learn uh, kind of thing. So I'm going to take this content anyway. I'm going to click those three dots, remove the block because I already put it here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to click over here where the paragraph is. And now I can convert that block to another kind of block. And this is a great thing to get used to when you start saying, I just want to load the content. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the head link, heading to something. I'm going to turn something to a quote and so on and so forth. So you get um, not every block can be converted into other blocks. You sometimes have to convert down to paragraph and back up if you want. Um, so there's different ways to do it. But I'm going to use the heading. And it's defaulting to the first major heading, which is the H2, which is actually what I want. Um, so is a cat the best choice for you? That's an H2. Here's another trick, just real quick, now that I want to load us up with tricks. But if you did, um, if I typed in hashtag, uh, sorry, hashtag, hashtag space, it's going to make that automatically a heading two. Just to see that. And if I do this, and this is, again, showing you options that you have. If I did uh, three hashtags, space. Now this is, you know, a heading three level. If you look now, that's H3. This is called Markdown, and it's for people who start doing everything keyboard. You have that option um, in the WordPress block editor. That's just a quick little aside that's kind of neat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing over a bunch of content. So is a cat the best choice for you? Um, and let's, let's see if I can get... Um, kind of all the headings and, and, and footers, I mean, headings, uh, oops, properly brought over. Let's, let's see if it's gonna cooperate. So yeah, I did a quick cut and paste from this Google doc. So, and honestly, this is the, whatever Google, the Google doc to Word, uh, WordPress needed to know that something was an H1 um, and I, and why this didn't come over. I'm not 100% sure. I highlighted this, which is a, which is an H2 and it didn't come over. But once I grabbed every, everything that I had written, I do have all of my proper, that's an H3, that's an H3, that's an H2. Because this is in the writing, and this is, I'm just writing the content, ready to adopt a cat, your next considerations. Where to adopt? Well, that's a sub of this topic, right? So that's using the, the headings properly to say, that my H2 section, and then under there, I have something called where to adopt. 
uh, Kit and Cat or Senior. That's also at H3, and then I might have content under there. Should you adapt, adopt a one or two cats or kittens, I'm having that under that same section. Then I've got a new section that, that I'm calling, um, and I'm calling them sections. It's literally, the, here's a heading now my, at an H2 level and level up, preparing your home for your new family member, cat proofing your house, provide safe spaces, litter box choices, uh, cat entertainment. Um, now say under here, I wanted to do uh, something like this where the uh, top five cat toys. Maybe I wanna I have that as a section under cat entertainment. Um, I might not wanna make this a section, I wanna bold it. Now you have, when you first highlight sections, you have bold, italic, you can create a link uh, to something. So I'm gonna say top five cat toys, maybe under there, I want now I wanna have a numbered list. So I hit enter, I can hit slash, and then I do list. Once I do list, if I want this a number list, I have the choice here where I turn it into a number. And now say maybe number one is uh, interactive uh, fishing rod toy, um, uh, electronic moving toy, um, stuffed mouse, uh, laser pointer, And then go, oh, I forgot one. Maybe the first top five cat toys. Another cat might be something that I want to put, right? So now I put those in, I can preview that and see how we're doing. Preview that in new town. And here's the sections that I've done. Um, we haven't applied any color, anything like that. We just have the formatting. There is a different font size slightly. Uh, Ray and I have not spent a whole lot of time on designing um, on the back end, and we'll, we can get into that if we've got time today, where we do things like apply colors to an H2 and an H3. Maybe you wanna, you know, that helps, again, make it easier. Now, here's my top five cat toys, another cat, um, just, as, just as I did. Now, um, we get some auto save, so you can see that it is saved. Uh, this is not published yet. Um, if I'm not linking anything, well, right now, with posts, here's a good thing about uh, to know about posts. If you publish it and if you have things like archive pages, it'll, it will show up on your website. And so if you do that accidentally, you can come back here and you can change the visibility and the status, um, it, uh, different post dates. So uh, visibility, um, you can make it private. And it's funny, this is the one, Ray, all of a sudden I go, where's the change back to um, draft? It's up here, yeah. switch to draft. You know, it's a funny thing where, but I, I think they're putting it on the same place that you're putting the publish button, you're putting the switch back to draft. So now it's it's no longer published. It is now back to, I'm working on it. I can see it, but it's but it's not public. Um, <coughs> excuse me. One thing I might wanna start doing is is uh, dressing the, the site up with some pictures or here's something I wanna do. I'm ready to do up uh, One of the things uh, is the cat best choice for you. Maybe you wanna really highlight something. And in this case, I'm going to use a, and I just typed in because I know it's there, pull quote, but maybe I didn't know it's there. You can go to your insert button, top left, the blue button here will open up your, ins your all your blocks that are available. And our core blocks are the ones typically in, in black. And I have one called the pull quote. Now I can just click that because I had already clicked Plus, or I could drag and drop it over. Now, now I'm going to have two pull quotes uh, next to each other. I don't want two pull quotes. I'm going to remove that. But you can insert from the inserter. You can drag and drop from that. Um, again, in the multiple ways. If I'm here and I click plus, I can, I can place. You know, really whatever. If I happen to know the name again, I could hit the slash and start typing. You know, the different types of blocks that I want. In this particular case. I'm adding um, a quote, and in this quote, um, uh, don't view your cat through through dog glasses. And that's actually from Jackson Galaxy, who if you have a cat, go look at his stuff because it'll teach you all about cat behavior. Um, save that draft. It'll auto save if, if I've got my settings there. Preview the tab. 
And now we're gonna look at a block that now has a different look. And that, that pull quote look that now is, look, all of a sudden now I'm scanning is a cat best choice. Well, don't view a cat. I mean, maybe you didn't even read this paragraph, but don't through, view your cat through dog glasses. And then you see a heading called cats are not dogs. And we can expand on what the difference is between and why understanding cat behavior is so important. Now you wanna dress up your um, understanding cat behavior. And now you're gonna hit uh, enter there. Um, hit my plus button and now I want again I'm showing you different ways of the plus button the uh, the inserter I'm going to put in an image so now I have this box that opens up I'm going to uh, upload an image I go to my media, li media library here's by the way what my red ketchup uh, mass convert that I just did while Ray was talking um, and um, I'll look here under large icons and maybe, uh, I don't know, that's a good picture I'm, that I wanna use there. And now if I preview that, I've dropped in that image. You know, understanding cat behavior and here's in their rest mode versus in their hunt mode and things like that. So you can see we're building the page by adding the different blocks. I also used the method of copying, pasting out of a Google Doc. I, I could do the same thing out of a Word Doc. Um, I could add more content from here. But we'll say I want to do something now. Uh, I've got a section that I created because I want to be sensitive to time um, called um, some great resources. And I want to make this a set, you know, uh, give this an H2 uh, heading. Um, I, even though I wrote as paragraph, I can check it um, heading. Um, so you're not confused. Headline is something we added uh, in, in our demo here, something called generate blocks that has its own version that has a lot more choices. Um, I'm going to have this section be an H2. And, and one of the things that I didn't I haven't spent any time on because I haven't needed to is in your different blocks, if you go over to the right under your block options, you have different things that you can control. Um, and by the way, these are changing and expanding. Um, one big thing that's going to be coming uh, is more spacing capability within each block, which is going to be something everybody's going to be happy about versus bringing in, there is a spacer block now, and hopefully we get to not pay attention as much to that. But each block will have different options that we have here. Now, uh, some great resources. So I want to say, you know, I have a number of videos um, that I think uh, would be um, valuable. Um, and so uh, I'm going to have a section called uh, videos. And maybe in this case, I don't want to make it a, uh, I probably do. I probably would want to make this uh, a heading and then make this an H3 again, because now this is a two, this is a three, a sub, a, a sub of that. Um, everything you need to know to adopt your cat. Now there's a lot of ways to embed a video, but I'm gonna show you the easiest one. Um, the actual video is this. Actually, why don't I just go to it so you can see it. Well, hello, cat loving that's, world. It is a cat. Okay, shush. That's Jackson Galaxy. Daddy Jackson Galaxy here. And I like this uh, video. I'm going to copy the URL to that. I'm going to come here. I'm going to paste it. And there you go. The video just got embedded. The Word, WordPress has gotten really slick with some of these types of uh, embeddings. And, and I might want to actually add the caption or uh, put his name or the full thing I, I put the title you can you can add the 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 caption for videos which is nice um let me preview this in a new tab just to show you what we're doing my content my sections uh, an image that i pulled in and now i've got a video and the video will play well, hello, right in that Murray. and it was just that just that simple which makes me laugh for saying it that way. Now, how much would you pay? Um, so let's see if there's anything else. Ray, anything else you want me to add? Um, I you put in um, 
How about the featured image? You can do a featured image on this? Or yes, yes, yes. All right, uh, 100%. So now we've created this, um, save the draft. And now I'm gonna go back to the things that I need to add to make this work in our archives and our things like that. So I'm gonna go to the post. And I am, this is now my options section. So I have the block, if I'm, whatever block I'm on, it's showing me that. Um, you get used to going over to just the post options. And in the, there's a couple of things. So we'll real quick go through things. Now, if you had a post that you definitely wanted everybody to see, maybe there's something, no matter what you do, you still want it at the top of the list, you could stick it to the top of the, uh, you could just click here. And that would be the first post that shows on your list uh, of posts. Um, if I had ultimate, if I had other authors, which I do, you know, you could assign it to a different author um, URL. Uh, categories, we're going to leave this uncategorized. Okay, Ray? Um, yep. Um, tags, we won't put, we can come back to that. Featured image, you know, the featured image is important for all the different reasons we're using. And we'll, let's just uh, uh, grab, well, my favorite, because that was, this is mine. Uh, so I'm going to set this as the featured image for this post, or if maybe I don't want to, maybe I want to replace it. Now I can replace it, upload, select files. I already have this folder open and I want to use uh, this one. These three cats in a basket, I think it is. And by the way, when you load images, I would say uh, four, four cats in a basket. We'll spend more time on accessibility, but when you put an image, what you want to do is you want to give it alt text that tells somebody who can't see that image what that image is about. I'm going to set that as a featured image. So now that is the featured image. I can, depending on how we, and we're going to do this in the next area where we talk about, but in, in the layout, there's my featured image. This particular layout is using the featured image at the top of the screen. And it's also something that could be used in archive pages that I think Ray's going to show you. Mm -hmm. um, and also under excerpt, um, let's put, let's say I actually wrote um, some good copy here. Something that makes sense. So I should have just put this. sites here that's a stupid excerpt but <laughs> that's okay and then i spend too much time on things like spelling right in this blog post what a terrible excerpt that is but that's what happens the one thing uh a complaint and i actually know a developer is coming up with a way to like undock this by the way is how thin the option box is yeah. Yeah. um it's kind of a pain Cat is love, I'll leave that because it's kind of nice. Uh, so now I've added a feature image, I've added an excerpt, I have not added a category, that's why it's uncategorized, I've not added a tag, and I'm going to I'm going to publish it. And if I view the post, if you, if you notice what happened once you publish it, you get a little box that pops at the bottom, there's also a link at the top. And here's our new blog post that we posted. And just as by default, you know, by me, um, the date, it's uncategorized. There's your featured image. Um, here's, a, here's the stuff we put in. We could, we could spend all night putting in all kinds of stuff, but I think that hopefully that gave you an idea of some of the things that go into a post. Um, any questions? Did any questions come in? No, nope, there, um, there were some comments in the, the, the chat. Just, okay. I think people are okay though. Yeah, um, so can you get out of this post then, Peter? Because what I'll do my demo, I'm going to jump into this one and add some of those enhancements to that one. Yep, I'm out. All right, cool. So you should be able to go. So you're going to take control? Yeah, yep. You want to shoot. Okay. There we go. All right. So that, again, there's a lot to this, and we're obviously not going to show every single thing you can do to, to format um, a post. But I'm going to cover a couple of things, I think, that where Peter left off is a good starting point for what I'm calling enhancements um, to a post. And again, these don't have to be done afterwards. They can be done as you're doing it. But if you're if you're new to this, sometimes it's good, I think as Peter was saying, just to, you know, concentrate on the content. Kind of get, you know, get the content published. Don't struggle with the tools. I think that's one thing I've I've talked to other clients in the past where they're like, oh, I don't like using WordPress because it's uh, you know, it's so complicated and all this. It's like, well. 
copying and pasting is not complicated. Use whatever tool you want to begin with. So the same thing with these enhancements too. These are things you can add afterwards and you don't have to either. So um, again, just real quick, uh, we covered a lot of this in custom post types, our previous, um, our previous discussion, but just uh, because you'll see this a lot, you know, categories or tags, what are those things? Uh, you know, they're, they're taxonomies, you know, it's a, a fancy name for a way to organize data. So if you think about um, like an e-commerce site, a taxonomy could be something like size or color, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so categories and tags, they're built into WordPress. Um, and because again, WordPress was a blogging platform to begin with, it, you have the ability to immediately assign categories or tags to a post. Um, and again, the, the real purpose of them is organizing data both on the back end of the website, but also on the front end for, for visitors to be able to, to see um, you know, um, data according to how they want to view the data. So it lets people filter data and sort things easily. So what's the difference between a category and a tag? It, it's kind of subtle, um, but think about categories as more of a high level grouping and, and tags are, are more granular. Um, categories, just like the whole, whole post pages discussion, categories can be also hierarchical. You can have child, parent, child relationships and then categories, subcategories, et cetera, just like you can with, with pages. Tags are more, are, are non-hierarchical. You know, they're, they're no relation to each other. They're just, you know, again, things you, you, you can throw onto content. Um, the categories are actually required for all your blog posts. If you don't create a category, as you saw the one Peter just created, WordPress will categorize it for you as uncategorized. Um, and tags, tags meanwhile are completely optional. Um, and in fact, we probably won't be doing a lot with tags in, in the, the demos here. Um, but another important distinction too is that by default, the archive URL, we'll talk about archives a, a little bit later, the archive URL for categories, the default one is slash category and then tags is slash tag. So let's say you create a category of, um, again, we're talking about sizes earlier, small, medium, and large. You know, if those are your categories, then if somebody typed in slash category slash small or slash category slash large, you know that that'll um, that'll be the archive page for for those those categories. Hey Ray, real quick. Sure. On the categories and tags, I yep. think um, one way to look at it because I know this does get a little confusing, even though it's been in WordPress since very early on. So one way to look at this is say you wrote a a, a blog post on adopting dogs. And you talked about, um, you know, the things you need to think about when adopting a dog, and um, and you might mention some specific breeds. Now you're not categorizing everything under a breed because there's a lot of breeds and all, but somebody might be interested about a specific one. So your category would be, you know, pet adoption is one category, and dogs is another category, um, you know, and that might be all you, all you need. But you might include tags that are some some things that you mentioned within. Uh, the posts like Shiba Inu, American Eskimo, and so on. You know where you, where you, where you list the breeds that if somebody is looking for, hey, do you ever talk about Shiba Inus? And then all of a sudden, yeah, we mentioned it over here in this post and all. But it's not something you would add to. And you see this, this right where sometimes you look at a list of categories for uh, a uh, a website, a WordPress site, and there are dozens and dozens of categories. Um, mm -hmm. It gets out of hand, and most of those categories are probably not needed. And in some case, you know, you may, may have benefited from using tags or something like that. Exactly. So that's one way I look at it. And that's where, I, I, again, they're both ways to organize your data, but I think it's more of uh, that idea of the, the grouping of your data. So yeah, you know, categories are a way to high level group. Tags are more the granular, as Peter was saying, down to breeds or, or things like that. Um, so they're just real quick, and again, I'll, I'll jump into the demo in a second, but just again, these terms that you'll see, and we already saw this as, as Peter created that blog post. So permalinks, you know, what's a permalink and what's a slug, and <laughs> the, the funny name slug. So a permalink, you know, is a permanent link or URL to your blog post or pages. In, in WordPress um, terminology, actually permalinks point to lots of things. Your media files have permalinks, et cetera, but in this case, um, you know, we're talking about blog pages. So think of that, that's that permanent link <clears throat> to, to a post or a page. And, or as well as categories, as I said, you know, that's, that's the way you get to categories or other lists of posts. The slug is really just that last piece of a permalink. 
So that's unique to a page or a post. And by default, when you, it uses your page title. So, you know, Peter put in that page title at the very top of his blog post, that became the slug once, once he saved, um, once he saved his, his page. So for example, like if you look at our, one of our previous pages, the contact page, that last part, you know, build Hartford Word, um, hartfordwp.com slash contact, that's, that's the slug. The rest of the whole thing is really the permalink. So real quick, again, we're not doing a lot of SEO stuff, but things to consider, it, you know, these are best practices, make those permalinks um, easy to read and meaningful. And that's again for people, so people can remember your links, and you know, again, it's that's good for your visitors. But also from a search engine standpoint too, you know, search engines do have some preference for having um, you know the, a title or a keyword in that URL. So rather than just having a bunch of gibberish in there, uh, it, it's it's helpful to have it um, something that can be indexed by a search engine. Um, shorter URLs, again, are always, uh, in general, better than overly long ones. I don't think that just stringing a bunch of keywords together that you're tricking a search engine. Uh, and also, key thing, too, if if you're looking at permalink structures, we'll look at just really briefly. I, I won't change it on the site, but don't change them on a live site, because when you do that, you basically are breaking all the links to your site. When I say breaking, Meaning any other site that was had backlinks to your site, you know, or search engines that indexed it, now all those links are, are gone. They're, they're, they're not pointing to, to valid pages anymore. So in general, this is something you want to set when you're first setting up a site and, and you leave it alone after that. So let me show real quick. Um, oops, I gotta move my zoom window. Sorry, one second here. There we are. So I'm just going to show a couple things around this. And then I'm also going to show a quick enhancement to that blog post that, that Peter created too. So, so let's look real quick at permalinks. So where do you find this? You know, how do you, how do you control this, especially when you're setting up a site? So as most things in WordPress, when you go to the settings and you go to permalinks here, these will be your site-wide settings. Um, so for all po posts and pages. So in the past, I'm not sure when this changed with WordPress, but I think in the past, the, the, the default was, was different. I think it used to be either plain or, or, or day and name, but um, for at least the past couple of years, and, and maybe even a little bit farther than that, um, by default, post name is, is the default setting for this. In, in most cases, that, that makes sense. You know, you think about it like all of our blog posts, we wanted to have the, the front part of it is going to be you know, our site URL, and then this slug is the thing that we're going to change based on the, the titles of our posts. Um, you know, the other options just to, you may encounter sites that have this, other options would have your, your date and time as part of the URL. So for example, you know, 2021 slash 11 slash 16, you really don't need to do that anymore. I, I think it was a, a way people were trying to categorize things through, you know, um, through the URL because there's, there's metadata or, or kind of meta information on your post that you can, if you want to, you can expose the, the date that a post was created. So there's other ways to sort and organize um, post by date instead of making it into part of the URL. So this is where you get to permalinks. Again, I think it even warns you if you tried saving them, it says, don't do this. And don't do this on a live site. So that's, that's something you don't want to touch. Um, and let's go, we'll, we'll look at that post that Peter created and there it is, adopting kittens and pets. So right now, um, I'll just finish on the slug piece too. So here we go. So here's the URL slug, advice on adopting kittens and cats. I would say for the most part, there, you're probably not going to need to change this that often, but we're going back to those rules of thumb. There may be times where you want your page title to be something long and descriptive, but maybe from a permalink standpoint, you do want to shorten something. Or if you've been writing a blog for a long time, you may start running into titles that are colliding with each other. And you know, you'll notice that when you save something, it has like adds two to the end of it because you know it's already unique in your database. So that could be a time where you want to go in and change the URL slug to something that's you know that is unique. So that's probably yeah, that's, one a, that's a great point, Ray. Yeah. yeah, that's probably one of the few times you're going to go in here and, and modify. Otherwise, in general, you know, you, you'll you'll keep the default. Now let's talk categories real quick. So, um, so right now, this site we've set up, there are no categories for our blog posts. So there's a couple of ways you can add categories to, um, to a blog. One is when you're in a post, that's, that's a time you can add a new category. So let's say this one is going to be, 
let's add a new um, thing in here. Let's call this um, I don't know, a broad a broad name. So education. So education. That's going to be our our category. And now we can remove uncategorized. But maybe this one is also part of the adopting adopting advice. So it, it's in two different categories. And, and let's say we have news, it, it could be in, in something else as well. Um, from, so from a tag standpoint, because this is all about cats and kittens, we could say our tag here is kittens, cats, um, adoption. You can see in this case, I mean, I hate to use the word keyword because keyword is its own loaded term now, but that, that's kind of what it are. You know, these are, these are things that are describing what's in the content, but it's not really organizing the content entirely around these, these parent categories. These are just words that people may be searching for later, and you know, it's a helpful way for them to, to key in on this. So that's one way to do a, um, a category. The other way to do it, and let me just say this, the other way, if you're planning ahead of time, especially you know as you as you start to do this a little bit more, is uh, to build some consistencies. You can do it from the side here as well. So you can look at your here's all my current categories, and let's say I want to add a new category now called news. Um, and again, it's not I don't, we're not going to worry about the hierarchy right now, but let's just add that as a new category. At this point, you can see I don't have any posts that are assigned to that news news category. Um, so let me show you another real quick way of, let's say um, if I want to add a category to an existing post, so you can see this one already has adoptions, et cetera. We can go into each of these individually and you know, click off the checkbox or another quick way to do it is the old quick edit. So in this case, shelter news, we'll say that's news and update that. Pet photo contest. Let's um, let's say lost dog. Let me do a quick edit on this. Let's say that's also news. And then um, pet photo contest. I want to I want that one. I do want to change. So I'll I'll add a new category here called contest. Let's see in here. Oops, there's closed it. Let's say add new category contest. And then hit enter, and let's, so now that's assigned to contest, and that's updated. So that's how you add categories. So now, if I go back to the list of posts, you can see they're all they're all categorized. These don't worry about these; these are the demo ones that came with WordPress. So that's categories and tags. Any any questions, or did I miss anything in the chat in categories and tags? If yeah, not, we were looking at. Um, okay. Well, one question was in terms of using in the in the URL um, the slug. The permalink. Do you do you tend to keep it as category, or do you change the base so that you could do like slash dot com slash articles slash and title and things like that? I I usually leave it alone. So I think what they're referring to is if you go back to settings here under permalinks, yes, you you can also change the category base or the tag base to make that something different. Yeah. I tend to I tend to leave that alone. I I don't find that there's much of a benefit to from even from an SEO standpoint of getting rid of category. Yeah. Yeah. You the same, uh, Peter? Yeah. I, I I don't or I or I remove it completely and yeah, just that's true. That's know. another or, or exactly you can hide that from indexing as well too. That's another thing we'll talk about when we talk about SEO tools. Yeah. Yeah. So let me show this. Um because I do want to get these is another comment uh mm -hmm. Bob's asking there these do not go so when you add a post, do they go into menu? Posts do not go into menus. Pages can automatically if you say to do it in your for your menu. Right. Posts, that's I guess that's another difference between page and post when you think about it. It's yeah. They, they, yeah, they they don't hop onto your menus. Exactly. And we'll show and briefly uh, after this, we'll show exactly how to start displaying these things. So let me let me just for the sake of time, I'm gonna show one last thing in here. So this is another yeah. just tool and tip from a usability standpoint. Um, but if you look at a post like this, which has a lot of great content to it, as Peter was saying, you want to do things to make it easier for people to read. And, and because he set this up nicely with H1 and H2 tags, I thought this is this a great one to show. Um, uh, we'll share a resource. The, there's a plugin. So if you're not using the Cadence theme like we're, we're using to build this, there's, there's plugins that can do something similar. But I'm going to add a table of contents to the top of this um, at the top of this text, just to make it a little easier for, for people to view. And with the cadence theme, let me see, where should I put I'll put it underneath. I don't know. I, you don't have to put it at the very top. I'll just put it here in the middle. 
with the cadence theme, it comes with a table of contents block. And this is a really neat block where it just boom, you know, click of a button. It's, and you can control this too. So I can control, you know, do I want it to just, maybe I don't want it to show H6 tags or that maybe that's just too much. I just want, I just want it to show the H, the H2 tags. So what this does is, um, you know, these are creating anchors down to the, the content. Let's, let's say, now let's just say H2s for now. Um, and as soon as I update this, I'll, I'll let's view the post and show you what it looks like outside the editor. It's a great way for people to, to jump down into a long piece of content and, you know, again, have a table of contents at the top. So that's, that's a built-in block that comes with, yeah. um, with, with Cadence. As I said, also in WordPress.org slash, sorry, plugins. Um, the other one I would suggest is an easy, easy table of contents, if I can spell. Something similar. So again, if you already have an existing blog, you're already using existing yeah. um, theme, not cadence. This is another one. It basically does the same thing. So you've got to do your tags first, then you insert it. Like you could put that any place you want in your content. So yeah, another great reason why really paying attention to those heading tags becomes valuable. And now look, all of a sudden your post is that much better because, you know, and automatically and, and magically, you don't have to create links to it. it. There's a there's a block that does that for you if you set it up that way. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can display in 30 minutes. <laughs> and if we run out of time again, we, we, can, we can do my piece. We can finish up this part two afterwards. All right, so where are we now? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, let me go yep. back to share my screen. Sorry, I closed yep. off the slides. So we, we had a question about the table of contents and being helpful for, while well, you pull this up, helping for people with, um, using screen readers, would it be redundant? I don't know the, the answer absolutely. I believe the way it works is if the, again, this is, ends up becoming a schema and all kinds of things, that the screen reader will say, here's a table of contents and then they could decide whether they want to then read it or not read it. That's the whole, mm -hmm. when you tag your stuff properly, you're now putting the power into the person who's using a screen reader for them to jump to the content that they, that they want versus painfully going through everything because you've been, well, I don't want to say sloppy, but not attentive to the needs. And that's why we're going to have a whole thing on, on accessibility at some point. All right, displaying a single post. So what we're talking about here ends up being very, again, specific to Cadence because we're going to spend some time in the customizer and the customizer and, you know, while uh, another quick aside, full site editing, something we're talking about coming in WordPress and oh, themes are going to change and the customizer is going away. Not, not really. Um, it, it's it, it's built into the themes that do a lot of things and themes are not being forced to use full site editing. So uh, we're going to be using customizers for quite a while and, and themes like Cadence, the customizer is super powerful, even in the free version. So we're going to spend some time in there. Um, Using the uh, the theme customizer, we have control over uh, the layout of uh, post pages and pages. Um, we can, you know, the design can be customized for posts different than the page level. It's kind of, kind of a hi hierarchy of inheriting at the top level, or I want my post to look a bit different. You know, what metadata to show, the metadata being the author name and the date and things like that, and what order do you want to show it or do you not want to show it, whether you want to display breadcrumbs, um, and then if you're going to use sidebars or not. And sidebars is an interesting thing, again, because of the way, um, you know, phones and things you, you know, show sidebars, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about them and, and, and how, to, how to use them. But um, it's another thing where, it, you know, the answer is, do you use the sidebar? It depends. It depends if your site benefits from it or if, you, if you're going to use like uh, category pages and things like that that are going to kind of take the place where you go to a page that gives your information. Um, next, uh, next link. So the things we're going to talk about in the customizer, and I put this here because you know we're going to sh Ray shares the uh, the slides is in the customizer and where to find some things. There's general and blog posts, and then you have the subsections, and you'll see this in a minute layout sidebar, uh, so on and so forth. Is a good reminder for me too to where to look for things sometimes, and different themes put things in different places. Um, so get to know the theme that you're using, um, and to the point where there is a plugin that I've used in the past, which is a search your customizer. 
where if you know, oh, typography, where do they put it in this one? And you type in the word typography and you jump to uh, you, all the different customizer sections. So I will take over. And any more questions while I grab the share? No, nope. I don't see anything. Okay. All right, you probably see nothing but the earth right now, yes. right? All right, because I have to remember where I am at a post. Oh, I don't want to be there. Oh, this is our demo site. Sorry, yes, let me close yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, I have too many windows and tabs. By the way, is anybody using the new tab organizer in Chrome? No. I am not. Like if you click up here, this arrow, and you can oh, see all the tabs in your different windows and all, and then there's ways of grouping them. Oh. I haven't done it yet. Okay, so we're gonna look at uh, uh, advice on adopting. We're gonna take a look at that um, at that post. And right now that, that post is being displayed in this format because this is, a combination of default and maybe some things that we've played with in the past, Ray, I think. Um, I'm not 100 so sure, but we'll, we'll, we'll jump into it. So on the front end of your website or on the back, so you have a customize button or on the back end, um, if you go to dashboard, appearance, customize, they both go to the same place, which is the customizer, if you're not uh, familiar with the customizer at this point. And the areas that we are going to be looking at, as I had uh, mentioned before, are uh, in the general section and in the blog post section, primarily for, for this demonstration. So under general, oh, let me, let me first, it, the one benefit about um, going in from the front end is you start customizing on the page that you're looking at. So if you're, if you're customizing, if you're modifying the way your, your uh, post looks like it, it helps to be looking at a post. Um, so now I went to customize when that post was open and now there we go. There, there's our post and now I get to work on it um, in the customizer. So under uh, general, the first section uh, that we're looking at um, that may or may not affect are things like the, the general layout. This is for your entire site and it can be customized, but say, you know, we want to change the width of, well, I'm changing the whole content width. That's not what I want to do. We'll just leave that where it was, but change the uh, some of the, the the effects so the the way content looks as you're adjusting the size. You've got these sliders, uh, single box uh, post box spacing. That has to do with basically the padding. If you notice as I'm uh, changing this, we'll leave it where it was at two. Um, and you get into different uh, things. If you wanted to put a box shadow around this box and things like that, I'm going to leave all of this, but here's an area under, under layout when you go under single post. So a lot of what we're looking at when you're looking at, at the actual post level, look for the word single post versus uh, post archive. Um, so these are, so like right here, archive grid, that's maybe something that, that Ray might uh, touch on, but these are some of the things, if you wanted to put a border around your box, you, you, you could do that, you know, right? So I, I don't want to do that, but you know, that, that's something that happens to be in, in cadence. I'm going to go back out of here and I'm going to go to um, sidebar. This is something we'll come back to, but it, only because of width and it's in general, if you decide, if we decide to use sidebars, um, but let's go right into, let's jump into the um, blog post section, because that's, that's the main section we're interested in for now. And we'll go to the blog post layout. So again, it was customizing um, blog posts. This is Cadence, blog posts, single post layout. Now we have all kinds of control over what we're seeing on this page. Um, and we'll start right from, right from the top. So the post layout. Um, one of the things is how the title works. Does the title work in the content or is it placed somewhere you know, at the top? I just click this section and now my title is way up here versus where it was down here. So just this, this one choice in, in Cadence is saying, is your, is your title and your metadata um, in, a, in a box at the top, like it is here or in the content? Let's, let's leave it where it was, kind of liked it there. Um, but maybe you don't, that's, that's, that's where your options are. Now you get to a section and do you want to align it left, right, or center? We'll, we'll line things left. The breadcrumb. This is where 
Um, clicking in, in Cadence, you have the eyeball on or off. Basically, can you see it or not see it? So in this case, I selected, let's see it. Um, and here we go. We've got breadcrumbs that automatically come up now where you've got home. And the way breadcrumb works, it's, it's the page under the page under the page of the post. So in this case, it's the, it's the post underneath the category, the primary category of education, um, and then with the home page. So if you want to, if you want to show uh, breadcrumbs, that's how you do it. If you don't want to show it, um, that's, you would take that off. Now you've got the same type of thing. You can go through and just to customize to your delight. So do I want to see uh, the, the categories and you notice their links and Ray will get into that to some degree. Um, or maybe I don't want to show categories. Uh, typically we do, we want to show the categories. Um, you could actually not show the title and you maybe you have a custom layout where you're already using the title somewhere else. Um, now, when we get into the, I just turn it back on metadata. So in metadata, um, now you're choosing whether you see it or not. So in that case, it was by and the author name and the date. Um, I'm viewing it. You can also show, I don't think I have an image in there, do I? Oh, I do. So mm -hmm. let's the gravatar. Um, and maybe I want to make, you know, I'm really, you know, we've got control over the metadata and what, whether we want to show it. Or maybe I say, ah, you know what? I don't really need to see that. In fact, I've got the kind of post where I don't need to attribute anything to any particular author. Maybe I don't want to show the author name and I can take that off. Um, or I can add, uh, show last updated date. Now I like this in a lot of cases, but then I'd want to also make sure that, you know, I'm either not showing uh, the date and I'm only showing the last update. Maybe you have the type of content. In this case, it's the same date. It's today, we, work, we just created it. Um, you can also turn on, even though we're showing categories in this nicer layout, we, we can also include the categories in the metadata. I would find that uh, redundant. Um, if we wanted to include the excerpt, and if you remember, it kind of sneaks in under here. No need to do that because we wrote a nice summary. Um, so you've got all these ways of turning things on or off in the customizer. Um, the default page layout is something to pay attention if we build out a sidebar. The sidebar being the widget area where you could include different widgets that might be like in this case, our, our, our recent posts um, that that we've put out there um, and we can control what's in those sidebars. Um, and Ray, we could decide whether we want to do that now or come back to it. But, you know, now we get into, oh, that's great. But now this is too thin over here. And you might want to go back to that page let under the um, under general and then uh, layout and set the post content width to something wider, for example. Or you might say, you know what? I, I right now I don't have enough posts to worry about. Uh, putting in my sidebar. Um, Ray, I don't know if you have a preference. Um, I'll let you kind of like manage it. that. Yeah, I like it better. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, content vertical. Uh, some of these, it's just a matter of, you know, trying out. So that's, that is the spacing at the top of the page versus you know, adding it or disabling it. Um, we'll disable it. Why not? Um, show featured image. If I click that off, I don't have a featured image. I like this much, much, much nicer. It's much more attractive to me. But then I have options in Cadence. I can show it right now. It's behind. It's behind this piece of content. I can show it above. So now it's the full image in the box uh, right above it. I can show it um, below, uh, which now shows it's above the title. So now it's below the title and in line with with your content. We kind of we kind of were using this behind kind of it's kind of nice attractive uh, things uh, nature to it and then we can even change um, things like the aspect ratio and the cropping of that image. Do we like it this size or maybe we want to keep everything that size? Well, that also depends on you being paying attention to the types of featured images you're using. Um, you know, if you want to allow for some vertical height um, and so on. A lot of again the the showing or not showing. Um, content is a lot of toggle switches and, and, and eyeball clicking and, and such. Now, one of the other things we can look at, and this is something that often when you first get cadence, for example, you might miss the fact that in this uh, section, single post layout, that you will have a general section and then 
uh, a design tab. And under the design tab, now we get into a level of even greater green. You, you want to control the uh, the post title font. And maybe we want to um, make so like the, the categories. I, I'd keep them. These are the default categories. But uh, the post title font. Let's just say we wanted the, that to be green. I don't like green. Uh, let's say we wanted it to be blue. Maybe we were. Now we're starting to bring some color into it, and then on the blog post level. Um, the breadcrumb font, all the different, now you, you get into the design levels um, that Cadence gives us in, in the things that we can add. Do we wanna give our, our, our post uh, section a uh, change the background for posts and change the background for posts on different devices. When you'll see this is the desktop and tablet and mobile. So you get, you get really granular uh, on there, but all of these uh, customizer controllers gives you the opportunity to um and you if you wanted to save it you like it you publish it if you get out of there you'll get a warning that says oh do you want to you made changes you want to keep it or do you want to abandon them so you can experiment in the in the uh customizer and then back out of it without saving anything um pretty safely but if you made a lot of changes that you like you need to publish it um and now if i close this i haven't made too many changes I may be restating the obvious, but just to remind folks, so when he does this, now this that layout gets applied to all blog all posts. posts. Yeah, even though yes. we're looking at this one particular post, that this layout now every blog post we have saved has that formatting to it. Yep. So I should do breadcrumbs plus general. I think looking at time, we you got to take over. All right, <laughs> I can do this in fourteen minutes. All right. Yes. So stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, you got it. All right. So now, so this is this is good. So where so where are we? Just got a level set again. So we've created a blog post. Peter has created a template to show an individual post, but still the problem is on the website itself. How do you how do you see any of these things? They're all still kind of invisible unless you know the URLs. So what I'm going to show is this idea of the archive page and another way to show blog posts if you want more control, but the, the archive is, is, again, depending on the theme you're using, you may have different templates. And again, all everything we're talking about varies depending on the theme, but we're using Cadence, a free Cadence theme. So it, it's a very, just a free version. Again, we're not selling Cadence, it's free. There's nothing to sell, but it's extremely powerful just for that the free version of it. So what, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do first is I, I need to kind of create a placeholder page for this archive. So I'm gonna call this, if you remember our website itself, let me just bring that up again, just as a reminder. We, we want to have all these things under our news page and everything's, we can call this blog instead, but let's just, we're going to stick with news for right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to create just a page called news because we don't have one yet. News, and, and I'm going to leave, there's going to be nothing on it. So this is just, so we have something to link to. Somebody asked a question before about linking. So we need something to link to on our site. And by default, if you remember, because this website isn't primarily a blog, if you go to the WordPress settings under reading, right now we're saying we want that, our homepage to be that, st our, that static page we created. But what we, what we can tell WordPress too is that for all of our blogs, this is what it considers the archives, we want to assign that to our news page. So, that, so these are kind of the things to start hooking up um, or connecting, I should say, the that uh, placeholder template page to WordPress. So now it knows, oh, that's going to be your archive page. So at this point, and and uh, we just have that that blank that blank page. But if we actually look at it, let me go back to pages now. Uh, the news page. Let me go open up a new tab. It's magic. Wait, how did that happen? <laughs> oh, you're saying, wait a minute, Ray. How do? What did you do there? It's, it's magic. Default, it's, it's magic. By default, Cadence is has assigned the archive template to that page that we just connected. So let me restate that again. You know, I created a, an empty page just with a title called News, and then back in WordPress, we said under the reading settings, this all of our posts, any new posts we add, are going to display on that page. That that's the connection between the two. Um, the, the other thing I just want to do real quick is just from our menu, just to make my life easier. Now we had this placeholder before I can get rid of that placeholder and I can just add in 
See, even WordPress is smart enough to say, oh, that's a posts page. That means yeah. it's basically the archive. I'm going to add that back to our menu, um, save our menu. And now if we go to our, I'm just, I'm refreshing the site. Sorry, just for the sake of time. Now, when I click on the menu, that brings us to this archive. Um, I won't spend a lot of time. So this is the built-in by default archive that, that Cadence provides. And as Peter said, that kind of the best way to, to see what's going on here, control it, is click on the customizer. So now that I'm in the customizer for this archive, just like a single post, this is letting me control the layout of this, this, this archive. So let's just look at kind of what we get out of the box. I didn't do anything right now. This is all free. It, it's doing some similar things to what we saw in a single post. It's saying, here's your categories. Here's the title. Again, I created some, some dummy ones in here um, before, just so we can see this. Uh, it, it has read more. There's a big excerpt in here. And it's, I think we only have five or six um, posts in the back, or maybe we just have four of them if, if you deleted the, the sample ones. I did. I did. Yeah, I, I, okay. I put the other ones into. But one thing, that, and you probably say this, one thing is the difference between if you don't have an excerpt, it's it's grabbing a certain amount of text and you can see the difference between the you know the first paragraphs of your post versus right. a designed right so exactly this one is taking it from just all my lorem and some text so let's let's well i'm gonna do a lot here because I, I think again you can play with this just like you you did um you can play with what peter was showing in terms of the single post but if in the customizer again if we want to control the look of this default archive page again we go to blog posts archive layout and we have a lot of the same controls so I, I won't you know go over the, the same ones we just saw but some some neat ones to call out here for example you know same things again let's say um, uh, we have the title we have the description I'm sorry that's in the title elements up here um, let's say that we want to change uh, the number of columns so right now it's showing us it three columns but you know again maybe we want we want to display two columns instead so we get a bigger picture it looks a little bit nicer this way. And for each post item, we can say, all right, um, we, we want uh, categories, we want title, maybe you know, just to be consistent. We don't care about showing the author in this case. Um, the date is probably not bad to show. You know, again, I think sometimes it's good so people see what's new and what's not new. And then down here in the excerpt, I believe it's the excerpt, you can control um, you know, either show the full content or the word count as well. So let's say we only want to display um, 40, 40 words, or maybe uh, let's, let's make it even smaller and say 20 words in here. So now all of these at least look a little bit more consistent just so from a display standpoint, it's like, oh, you know, again, this would be meaningful text in here. And then people would click on the read more button to actually view e each of the posts. And you can hide the view more button, et cetera. And you can do all those same formatting um, design things that Peter talked about as well. I can change colors here of, of all this stuff. So let's, just for the sake of time, I'm, I'm going to publish this. So by default now, with no code, we, we have an archive page. And again, to show what this looks like on the site, you know, you click on news here, it's going to bring this up. It's, it's pretty nice. I mean, just again, out of the box. And if I click on one of these again, this brings us to the individual page. I'll do one last thing in a couple of minutes here, and then we'll, we'll save some time at the end for, for questions. But now let's go back to the homepage. Let's, you know, again, I think a lot of sites, you don't want to just bury your news on a link on a menu. Um, we want to make it pretty prominent. So here's our homepage. Here's what we've been building. If you remember, we have our adoptable pets section. Now I want to add some of those blog posts to this section as well. And let's, let's see if I can do this in five minutes. So let me edit this page. Uh, again, I like this. I like this view as well. I like the uh, the navigation in here. And so it's on the bottom of our site. Let, let's add a section in here. I'm going to click on Add Block. And because we're using Cadence, um, we're thinking of everything as rows and sections. So I'm going to start with a, a row. Uh, I'm going to have a single row, and I'm going to add a advanced heading. So I'm going to call this News. And I'm going to leave it as an H2. It probably doesn't matter too much. We'll align the text in the center. Uh, and then underneath here, again, nothing, nothing too fancy. I can, well, so I'm going to separate things. I, I, I know how this layout will go. I'm going to add another row. Again, single row. And in Cadence, Cadence has a block in here 
we can let's let's view all of our, our blocks in here. So in cadence, there's a block in here called posts. And if you remember, if you go back a couple of um, a couple of presentations ago, we talked about WordPress. WordPress has a built-in block. It's very recent. It's called a query block, a query a query loop. Um, go back to our previous presentation to see how that works. In my opinion, it's it's getting there. It might be better <laughs> next year after a couple of revisions, but it, it it can't quite do I think what Cadence does out of the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to add in a posts block, and as you can see, again just completely free. It's already pulled in some of that same information onto um, right into our homepage. So what I want to do is I want to limit this. So I, I want to say, OK, let's only show number of items, uh, three, three items, the three of the newest posts. You can order these. You can categorize them. You could you could sit, just say, I just want news items, et cetera. You can do all the same things that we did previously. Sorry, my Zoom window is blocking me here. And then meta settings, let's do the same things we did before. I'm going to turn off author. Um, I'm going to turn off, well, I'll leave the date over here. Uh, and let's, what about the content settings? So enable excerpt, we're gonna have a custom length of the excerpt, 20 characters again. And I'm gonna update that. And you can do a lot more, like I'll do one last thing in here too, because I get at four minutes. So underneath this, I'm gonna say, all right, so that's where you can see the, the three most recent, and then we'll add a button in here. Let's add a button, um, advanced button, sure. And let's say, view all news. And that view all news button, if I remember how this works, if I go to news slash, uh, I think that's gonna work, let's, let's see. Yep, and update that. Let's look at our page again. So let's go back to our homepage. So I got my Zoom window blocking everything again. So now on our page, we have our adoptable pets section. We have our news section. I probably would, again, do some styling of this, make it look a little bit better. So each of these individual things, you can click on it to get to the, the news story. Or if I want to view them all, click on view all news. And if I linked it correctly, you get the archive page. So two different ways to show multiple posts. Again, you can use a block. So a block gives you a lot more granular control of, of how to display blog posts. You can, again, do a lot more styling with that. Or the archive is more of, think of it as that's, that's your, your, um, your page that pulls all, all posts together. It's a page dedicated to seeing all your blog posts. So I know that was really quick, <laughs> but, but it, you know, the nice thing again with some of these themes is that I know everyone may not be using the same theme, but the concepts should be the same. So if you're working on your theme, look at what it has for archives. That, that's going to be the same thing we showed. Or there should be a similar block or, you know, something in your theme if you're using a block-based theme for displaying blog posts. Again, the settings may be slightly different, but that's the one that you'll use to get more granular. So again, that's how I stuck it onto the home page was, was with that block. Any questions? Did I miss any? And we're kind of running low on time here. Um, if not, let me just go real quick to the wrap up slides. I, I want to be cognizant of time. So where are we? All right, so that was the this, this. So what's next? We're going to continue to build things <laughs> as, as we define features. And as I said, you know, these are the starting points. Again, the, the, some of the things we even did tonight, as I said, I wouldn't consider this finished. I would, I'd go back and maybe Peter and I, in our, all our spare time, would go back and polish things a bit and you know, make, make the design look a little bit better. So we have that kind of work left to do, but we're still building out functionality on the site. Um, and we're also gonna go back and start, again, now's a good time. There's never you know, a perfect time to do this. We'll, we'll, over time, we'll start doing things like performance enhancements, all those other things that aren't really content related to the site, but things that you should consider, you know, for having a good website and accessibility, you know, kind of a big topic in its own too. We're, we're going to cover that in the future as well. And here's some resources as well. We'll send out these. So we'll send out the slides. Again, if you're, you're new here, we'll send out the slides afterwards. Um, the recording, everything should be available tomorrow sometime. Um, play around with this. You know, I, I think some of these themes are getting better at um, giving you stuff just out of the box that in the past, when you had to write your own theme of using an older yeah. theme was very difficult. You'd have to do code. You'd have to have an archive.php page and get in there and do things. Now, 
know, the customizer and everything else really lets you um, do a lot with, with like kind of very little technical skills. Yeah. Any uh, thoughts there, Peter? Uh, the next version that's due out in December of WordPress is, has made some improvements that we expect to see in the editor that will make the use of the list view in much more powerful, much more e you know easy to, to do a lot of things. The inserter is gonna be better. So some good things to look forward to that's gonna take what like we were working on today, what I was working on today and even make that process a little bit better. They keep you know incremental enhancements. So we'll probably be talking about that uh, next meeting. Cool. All right, so we're gonna kind of rush at the end there a little bit, but hopefully, we always I, I think I think we always <laughs> we come yeah, at, the, at the end of the water. I want to you know, join all the pieces together. So you got to see the creation and the displaying. So again, if you have questions, if you missed anything, please rewatch the recording. Um, reach out to us on the Facebook group. Reach out to us through Meetup. Uh, we, we yeah, if you're not comfortable with Facebook, yeah. Meetup works. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone again for joining us. Have a great night. We hope to see you again next month on our meetup. Take care. Thank you guys. Good night. Bye. See you.